Mega Drive was released in Japan on October 29, 1988. This was two months before Final Fantasy II was released in Japan, and two years before most Americans would know the series even existed. 16-bit adventures for Sega's new system, like Fantasy Star II and Sword of Vermilion, made NES owners think about the future. The Super Famicom didn't arrive in Japan until November 11, 1990. It handled thousands of colors, dozens of sprites on screen, and eight channels of sampled sound in full stereo. Backgrounds came to life thanks to Mode 7, which allowed layers to be scaled and rotated. It also supported four megabyte storage units, so anyone inclined to make a role-playing game with this technology could potentially squeeze 40 to 50 hours of gameplay into one plastic cartridge. The super versions of the NES and Famicom hit the market running thanks to their epic fan base and solid relationships with third-party developers, including Square. A fourth fantasy was inevitable. Final Fantasy IV was released in Japan on July 19, 1991. For the first time, it also came out in America the same year. It was renamed Final Fantasy II in the States, and with most US gamers absentmindedly skipping over two entries in the franchise, it was considered a phenomenal leap forward. IV was once again directed by Sakaguchi, designed by Amano, and composed by Uematsu. Final Fantasy IV had a unique protagonist, straying from the series' tendency to place massive burdens on heroes with little to no combat experience. IV's heavily conflicted leading man was Cecil, a dark knight of the Kingdom of Baron and commander of the monarchy's airship fleet called the Red Wings. After questioning the king's request to attack innocent people in the search of four crystals, Cecil was stripped of his rank and forced to reevaluate his ambitions. He was aided on his path of redemption by his dragoon companion Cain, his white mage lover Rosa, the lost summoner Rydia, and many others. Final Fantasy IV removed the interchangeable job system from the previous game to focus on the characters, similar to the plot-driven party swapping from two. Jobs were already assigned and oftentimes related to the plot. Spells and summons were now learned by levels, through specific battle criteria or in accordance with the story. You never knew what crew you were going to end up with, but the arrangements were given a boost by allowing an extra character, making the battle line built for five, for the first and only time. Telepathic hypnosis played a big factor in characters leaving your group. Once Cecil had left his kingdom behind, the warrior Golbez took control of the Red Wings and the will of Cain. The karate master Yang also briefly fell victim to mind manipulation, and both of your friends had to be smacked around before they eventually snapped out of it. These additional characters didn't just follow, they fought, and sometimes died alongside you. Your ranks gained the abilities of Tella, the vengeful mage, Edward, the pensive bard, Palam and Porum, a precocious pair of young mages, Edge, an impulsive prince, and Fusoya, a resident of the moon with many buried secrets to tell. Even the tinkerer Sid grabbed a club and finally took matters into his own hands. It's also worth noting that Rydia is one of the only characters in the entire franchise that goes through a permanent physical transformation. She left your party unexpectedly and resurfaced in the Land of Summons, where time moved faster. She dropped her ability to perform white magic, but gained several new spells, her full summoning potential, and a matured character sprite. Four's biggest technical influence on the rest of the series was the introduction of the active time battle system created by Hiroyuki Ito. With it, adversaries don't wait patiently for players to input actions. Instead, each enemy and character gets a turn every few seconds, with players forced to act quickly if they want to finish the battle with minimal damage. The system made combat a bit livelier, allowing for more engrossing gameplay. The battle screens added unique terrain layouts underneath their heroes and enemies. The environments, characters, monsters, and bosses all received a significant improvement in detail. Group spells all animated at the same time. Smoke and fog was now transparent. Square clearly proved that Final Fantasy IV could not have been done on the 8-bit Nintendo. You could even adjust the color of the menus. While previous fantasies typically had just the planet's surface to explore, 4 added two free-roaming maps, the underworld and the surface of the moon. Your flying machines were fashioned with accessories to help you get to these new places. The lunar whale was resurrected to help you reach the stars, and black chocobos were introduced that could fly but only land in forests. All 
of Nobuo Uematsu's scores have been exceptional for their era, but Final Fantasy IV was the first noticeable example of the melodic subtleties and enduring themes that his work has gradually become famous for. Theme of Love has been taught to Japanese school children as part of their curriculum. The tracks from Four have appeared on several compilation albums and have been performed live by numerous orchestras and metal bands. The story in Four rekindled the four-tier elemental structure and even referred to the monsters as fiends. Mylon, Kainazo, Valvalis, and Rubicant weren't the original names, but their inclusion was a nod to the first game. Summons were also given peculiar names as Four first introduced Americans to the advanced magic. Shiva, Odin, and Bahamut kept their names throughout the series, but Americans first knew Ifrit and Ramu as Jin and Indra. One of the towns in 4 began a Final Fantasy tradition of names reappearing in later games, as Mesidia, originally from Final Fantasy II, returns as a homey mage village. 4 made several direct references to our universe as well, it was the first fantasy to name its world, as Fusoya refers to it as the Blue Planet. He explains that he and the rest of his race, called the Lunarians, originally came from a planet in between Mars and Jupiter. Fusoya also revealed that Golbez was not their ultimate enemy, as he was also being brainwashed by another Lunarian named Zemus. Eventually, Zemus revealed his true form, but with the help of some well wishes from home, Cecil and company found the strength to overcome the overgrown evil. Four was the first Final Fantasy and one of the first RPGs to have multiple characters with their own deep, intertwining stories and affecting relationships. It was the first to link two heroes together romantically, a device the later Final Fantasies would hinge entire plot lines on. Some criticisms were raised regarding the spotty English translation, but even those little quirks are recalled with fond memories by longtime fans. The script and the graphics would be continually revised as 4 was ported to the PlayStation, Wonderswan Color, and Game Boy Advance, and it's scheduled to be released in 3D on the Nintendo DS sometime before the end of 2007. 4 has sold close to 3 million copies across all its systems, but it was not an immediate hit. Whether it was because of 4's international sales numbers, Nintendo's tentative relationship with Square, or the time and resource consuming task of translating one massive game after another, the next title was for the third time in the franchise, only released in Japan. Despite thousands of American gamers suddenly discovering the role-playing series, the fifth installment wouldn't make it to US shores until the end of the decade. Final Fantasy V was released on December 6, 1992. The now infamous creative team returned for the fifth time, and Tetsuya Nomura was added to the group as a monster designer. Nomura would go on to design the characters for 7, 8, 10, 10 2, and direct Advent Children. Five's opening broke the mold by having the four main characters meet each other for the very first time. Born to be a wanderer, the hero Bartz sees a meteor fall while camping out with his chocobo, Boko, and the two run to the side of the crash. There, they met Lena, the princess of Tycoon, and Galif, one of the oldest central characters in any Final Fantasy, whose memory was recently knocked out of his mind. Crystals returned as the core theme of the story, but this time they directly affected the world around them, other than just threatening to destroy it. When the wind crystal shattered, the wind stopped blowing, making it nearly impossible to travel by sea and so on. The quest set you in search of the whereabouts of King Tycoon, the identity of Galif, and the evil behind it all. Five returned to the multiple job structure from three, but with a new refined system also created by Hiroyuki Ito. Ability points were gained once you received your first handful of jobs, so you leveled your jobs and characters separately. When each new level was reached, you got a new ability, and you could then assign one as a sub-ability to another job. This was the series' first attempt at multi-classing. The brand new classes including Blue Mage, Berserker, Sorcerer, Time Mage, Trainer, Samurai, Dancer, Chemist, and Mime created even more advanced abilities that would reappear in the sequels to come. Blue Mages brought their enemy skill-based power to the party, 
Samurais tossed gill, and mimes could mimic the commands of others as well as assign up to three sub-abilities. Thieves could now dash, a time-saving talent that would be added automatically to the ports by pressing the B button. Multiclassing was highly functional, but it was also rewarding because it offered you the chance to change your physical appearance at will for the first time in the franchise. There were a total of 110 different costumes, as each character looked different when they assumed each job. Sid helped you get back above the clouds, but this time he was assisted by his grandson, Mid. The two busy workers turned your airship into a three-part flying machine, boat, and submarine to glide across all three planes of the planet but their planet wasn't the only one they explored. Their primary adversary, X-Death, revealed himself shortly before Galif began to recall his memories. Galif remembered he was in fact royalty from another world, and had a granddaughter named Kryle. When X-Death was first released, Galif was one of the four original warriors of Dawn that stood up to oppose him. One of X-Death's henchmen, Gilgamesh, made his first Final Fantasy cameo in five and would return as a flamboyant adventurer in the 2D and 3D journeys to follow. X-Death's aim was to harness a void locked inside the rift between the two worlds that was created when they were magically ripped apart. To force the two dimensions together, he stole four crystals from a sacred tree keeping the balance in place, and it seemed all hope was lost for the new Warriors of Dawn. It was then that Galif made it to his feet and made franchise history. Before Eris, Galif was the first long-term party member to die in the line of duty. The loss was a shock considering you were well over halfway through the story, but all your hard work spent honing his abilities didn't go to waste. Galif transferred all he knew to Kryle, and she filled his space in the battle queue. A visit to the Turtle Sage Gill revealed the existence of 12 legendary weapons, sacred items destined for the jobs they were created for. With these tools in tow, the newly assembled foursome crossed into the rift and faced X-Death right as he merged with the Void itself. For the first time, there were multiple endings triggered by whoever was or wasn't standing in your party when X-Death's final form was defeated. Final Fantasy V was supposed to be Final Fantasy III in America, but the first localization was cancelled. It was then rumored to be released as Final Fantasy Extreme, but plans for that project also fell through. Even a third attempt was launched and crushed to bring V to PCs by developer Top Dog Software. These failed attempts aggravated gamers so much, V became one of the first titles to receive a fan translation, and until 1998, they were the only ways you could play it. Eventually, Five re-emerged on the PlayStation and Game Boy Advance with updated cinemas and new jobs to try on. It was then that American gamers could finally experience the intricate job system that would leave undeniable traces on the rest of the franchise. Join us next week as we celebrate six generations of sprite-based storytelling. We'll look back at the fascinating evolution of these pixel-perfect heroes that continually elevated the bit role-playing era to new heights, and thoroughly examine one of the finest stories the series has ever told. <laughs>